by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we thank you right now for uh, life instructions so we can know you more perfectly. Therefore, we may be able to serve you more faithfully. I thank you right now that you, Holy Spirit, are the teacher in this moment, making known the mysteries of the gospel. I step back that you may move forward. I thank you, Father, that the passion of Jesus Christ and compassion of Jesus flows from my heart. Thank you right now that you think with my mind and speak with my mouth. I thank you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus that all of the harvest is secure. There are people that you sent here today that need to start or reunite an authentic relationship with you. Jesus given the opportunity they'll be free to choose you as Lord and Savior. I also pray right now in the name of Jesus, there are people that you sent here today that need to uh, be a part of this life-giving church. They need a family that they can be a part of, and I pray right now nothing stops them from joining the Faith Center. If they found us on Google or website or a friend invited them, they need a place that they can call home. But most importantly, this is a gathering of victorious believers and Satan. You are absolutely defeated in every area of our lives. All we do is win. All we do is win. All we do is win. In Jesus' name, and everybody shout amen. Come on, let's make our faith confession for the word of God. Let's do it, family. The applied word of God will change my life instantly. Therefore, I walk by faith and not by sight. I will possess my promises. I will pursue with passion. I will prosper as my soul prospers. My faith is my evidence. In Jesus' name, will you say amen? amen? Hey, would you do me a huge favor before you take your seats? Would you prove this is not a stuck-up church? And will you be so kind to speak to the people around you and tell them good morning, dap them up, shake their hand? Hey, fellas, it might be a great time to shoot your shot. You never know how things could end up. Yeah. Hey, streaming audience, thank y'all so much for being a part of what we're doing. Well, y'all click share. Y'all are so faithful. Y'all are so dedicated. Check in and let us know where you're viewing from. Thank y'all for being a part of what we do. We're already in a series that I want to invite you into for those of you that are, are here today, those of you who just got off vacation and our guests that are here. Series is called Challenge Accepted, and within our series, we have different things that we've been doing concerning Challenge Accepted. We talked about the importance of prayer, so we were praying together for a week in our Faith Center group. Then we talked about the importance of fasting, and we've been fasting on this week. How many of you uh, enjoyed the fast this week? How many of you needed the fast this week? How many of you realized how much social media you used this week? How many of y'all had to remove some of y'all apps off y'all phone so y'all can make it this week? Okay, all right, all right, all right. But you made it. Say, I made it. I made it. This week, Coco, I want to talk about the power of communion. The power of communion. The power of communion. I want you to go ahead and turn to Mark, I'm sorry, Matthew 26, 26. Mark, Matthew 26, 26. Here, here, here's what I think is so special, Kawana, as we had families come together today to dedicate their children to Jesus. One of the uh, parts of our vision for our church is family. And what I want to do is see families be as successful as they possibly can be. Family means dating couple. Family means single mom with children. Family means single person. Family means empty nesters. Family means husband, wife, children. That, 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 that's family. So I don't want you to exclude yourself because you say, well, I'm not married. That don't mean that you're not family. That don't mean that you don't have needs. That don't mean that you don't have issues. That don't mean that you don't have challenges. That does not mean that God has not outlined success for you. And what I want for every family and what I desire for every family in this place, listen to me, is to live in total victory in the name of Jesus. Okay, three people care. I want every family in this church to live in total victory in the name of Jesus. Okay, I got five families. Can I get at least 12? I want every family that's sitting in this church that wants to be in victory to say, I believe me and my family live in total victory in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to talk about something on the onset that may not be very, very exciting, but it's powerful. 
And I want to show you how communion blesses your life and your family's life. Jesus is getting ready to be crucified for our sins. And he gathers his family together. He gathers his disciples and he begins to tell them about the events that's about to come. And he uses the bread and the wine symbolically as his body and his blood to tell them what's about to happen. But here's the thing I like about God. He doesn't do anything for nothing. So when the the crucifixion happens, the bread, the body, it's all for a reason. And we're going to look at those reasons today. And I want you to accept that for you and your family. I've been saying this all week long. And I said it about 15 times this morning. I'm going to say it right now. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Are you there, Matthew 26, 26? If you're there, say I'm there. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and he blessed it. I want you to take note of that. And then he broke it. And then after he blessed it and he broke it, he gave it to the disciples. And he said, take, eat. This bread now is my body. Next verse. Next verse. And then he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. Next verse. Next verse. For this is my blood of the New Testament New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. Let's look at three simple things that we need to see. Three simple things that we need to see. Number one, number one, Jesus was eating with his disciples. That's simple. Number two, the bread is symbolic of his body. Number three, the wine is symbolic of his blood. Let's look at three simple things that we need to do based on the scriptures that we just read. Number one, live a whole life, not a broken life. Say that with me. Live a whole life, not a broken life. Do it one more time. Live a whole life, not a broken life. Listen to me. Listen to me. Don't you be an A minus, an A plus student in church and an F minus student in life. Don't you come and know when to wave your hand and know what to say and know how to speak Christianese and know how to greet the person beside you, but then you don't have peace at home. You don't have joy in your heart. You're mentally and emotionally a wreck and none of your relationships are stable. You can't even get along with your children. You can't even get along with yourself and you stay by yourself. You and your dog don't even get along and your dog ain't even really done nothing. You have to say, listen, I want my whole life to be successful. Not just part, no. I want to be in success in every area of my life. And when I throw the word success, and I'm not talking about secular success, I'm talking about living with Jesus and all of the benefits that come with living a dedicated, devoted life to Jesus Christ. Number two, number two, live a life of thanksgiving. Live a life of thanksgiving. Say that with me. Live a life of thanksgiving. Hey, 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 God been too good to you for you to be complaining. One of the things I learned about Christians is they love to stick their lips out when things don't go their way. What do you mean to tell me? God's been so good to you. Jesus shows us the example because, number one, he gets the bread, James, and he blesses it. Then he takes the cup and he gives thanks. This lets me know whatever God puts in your life, you should be able to give thanks for it. No, some of us, we we get stuff in our life and we want to complain about it. Why are you complaining when God's been so good to you? Number three, number three, number three, number three, live for Jesus like he actually died for you. We have to live for Jesus like he actually died for us. So we're talking about communion today. uh, And when we receive communion, number one, uh, we do it to commemorate the death of Christ. The death of Christ. We do it to commemorate the death of Christ. Y'all, any old school people grew up with the offering table that said, this do in remembrance of me? So I mess with nine o'clock. Why did we receive offering on the communion table? That's a whole nother question, whole nother thing. Anyway, we're going to keep going. Maybe because there was no offering table and that was the only table they had. But it said the commun- this doing remembrance of me. Anyway, that if, just don't even worry about me right now. The next one, 
We do it to signify, seal, and apply to believers all of the benefits of the new covenant. Listen to me. The Bible is filled with benefits. The relationship is filled with benefits. Don't live a life beneath the benefits that God has for you. Joy is a part of the package. Peace is a part of the package. Healing is a part of the package. Serenity is a part of the package. Are y'all with me? Um, Each time we take communion, which is also called the Lord's Supper, Watch this. We are reminding ourselves of the covenant we have with God that was ratified by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. I grew up in church where you took, received communion on first Sunday. Every first Sunday, rain, sleet, or snow, communion Sunday. The thing about communion is it's not a first Sunday thing only. It's an any time you want to remember God and you can do it anywhere, anytime. So here's the challenge for this week. Here's the challenge for this week. Check this out. Check this out. I hope y'all respond better than 9 o'clock did. This week, I want to encourage the head of every household to minister communion to your family. Every household. You the head of your house, you got four people in your house, I want you to do communion this week, three times, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I know some of y'all are like, wait a minute, okay, now where am I supposed to find communion? It's not like you just find that at Toys R Us. Here's the thing, I have it outside for you. When you leave today, I want you to be able to get enough communion for you and your family for this week. And I want the head of household to minister communion to your family. I have the prayer that you need to pray. I have the outline of what you need to say and the closing prayer. I want you to build a confidence in this. Well, Pastor, it's just me by myself. I want you to take that communion and I want you to pray over yourself and I want you to commune with you and Jesus. And I, Because here's the thing. As we fellowship with Jesus, I, this is what I want, Kawana. I want God to do something special in your family this week. I want families to get back to operating in unity. I want families to have more peace. I want families to be able to operate on the same page and just defeat the enemy at all costs. I want husbands and wives growing closer together. I want siblings to be able to get along. I want the weapons that the enemy has formed to actually be torn down and your family walks around in victory. Victory on Monday. Victory on Tuesday. Victory on Wednesday, victory on Thursday, double victory on Friday. Sit back and talk about the victory on Saturday because too many of our families are being victimized and we're not living in victory. So this week, we're going to release the power of communion over our families. And we're going to come together. Some of us ain't being seen eye to eye, but it ain't about seeing eye to eye. It's about spirit to spirit and defeating the enemy in the name of Jesus. I believe that's just all right. So let's examine the power. I've got about three things I want to outline for you today. And then we're going to leave and go to Sizzlers, okay? Number one, when you receive communion, check this out. The power of the sin curse is being broken. It's not that exciting. The power of the sin curse is being broken. The bread and the wine reminds us of Jesus' broken body and the blood that he shed on the cross. Through his agony, Jesus redeemed us, watch this, from the eternal consequences of sin and reconciled us to God the Father. Communion reminds us of how the relationship started. It started with nails, a cross, and a crown. When we commune, we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, but then also we understand that Jesus had to go through what he went through for you and I to be free from our sins that we have a right to eternal life. And the challenge that I, that I have, that I have, that I have, is we in church, we get more excited about a new car than we do about new salvation. 
So somebody get a new car. Girl, I got a new car. Praise the Lord. Okay, we like the fact that you got, you know, a 97 Datsun with some new rims on it. We, we cool. But, but what about your life? What about your soul? What about what really matters? This ain't about cash, cribs, and cars. This is about eternal life. And when you see Jesus, what is he going to say about the way you treated people, the way that you lived for him, the way that you obeyed what he asked you to do? But in the meantime, let's get some cash, let's get some cribs, and let's get some cars. It's a part of it. But I'm just talking about the balance, the balance. We, 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 we're, so, we're so cynical, we're, we're so fleshly, and, and when it comes time to the spiritual things, we're not really that excited. But if Jesus didn't do what he did, all of us would still be lost and stuck in our sins. If Jesus didn't do what he did, all of us would be on our way to hell, as they say in old school with gasoline draws on. If Jesus didn't do what he did, none of us would be able to be free from the stuff that you're free from. I know you're sitting next to somebody. I know you are looking all cute. I know you G'd up and they don't know what you used to do but God know what you used to do. He know what you're struggling with now. He know what you want to do that you used to do that you done got too old to do or you're too scared to do. But if it had not been for Jesus, you would still be where you were. But thanks be unto God, there's a risen Savior that went to the cross and died for you and you and you and you and me. And because of his sacrifice, we live free. Romans 8 and 1, Romans 8 and 1, because of his sacrifice, we can live free from the curse of sin. Romans 8 and 1, there is now, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit uh, of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. No, no, the law of Christ Jesus has made me free. He made me free. You couldn't make yourself free. Jesus made you free. Don't you act like you made yourself free. No, it was the power of God that broke the sin curse. Uh, am I talking to anybody in this place today? Or uh, y'all just flew down here from heaven with your halos on and you act like you've been perfect all your life? No, if it had not been for God doing what he did, man, you wouldn't even want to talk to me. I was a mess times three divided by one, carried a two, and still messed up. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk. Watch this, not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Check this out, check this out. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Last verse, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded, this is what I love, y'all, is life and peace. Is life and peace. Is life and peace. This is what he did for us to give us life and to give us peace. To give us life, to give us peace. Here's number two. Here's the benefits or the power of receiving communion. Because he was broken, we can be healed. 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 I want to talk about the, the, our healing in our mind, healing in our bodies, healing in our emotions, healing in our mind. Healing in our bodies, healing in our emotions. Healing in our mind, healing in our bodies, healing in our emotions. If you don't know how to manage your emotions, your emotions will make a mess of you. Some people say, you need to stop being so emotional. No, I can't because God gave me my emotions. But I need to learn how to manage them. You learn how to manage them. But see, that's all a part of the package. Peace, listen to me. A vacation is not going to give you peace. Hold on one second. <laughs> one lady over there was like, try me and watch. I guarantee you, send me on the beach. Trust me, a vacation will 
give me peace. No, it won't because you got to pay for the thing. And then when you get your credit card invoice, you're like, God, dog, it out. No, no. What I'm trying to say is, look, 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 look. Peace is not a result of sand and aqua water. Peace is a result of staying off Boulder Crest in your apartment and you just got the tranquility of God all over your life. You know, it's not about your location. It's about what's on the inside of you. So you can be healed. Say, I can be healed. You can be healed in your mind, your body, and your emotions. Let's look at Isaiah. Let's look at Isaiah 53. I'm going to read the Amplified Version. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you need physical healing, that's cool. If you need emotional healing, that's cool. If you need mental healing, that's cool. Let me park there. One of the greatest um, uprisings within society and especially in churches that churches really didn't give a lot of credence to back in the day was mental illness. They didn't want to talk about it. They didn't want to say anything about it. They just wanted to bury it. No, there are some people that have some real chemical imbalances and some real spiritual things going on, some generational things going on that causes mental illness. Let me explain. Cancer attacks the body, right? Well, there's something mentally that causes a sickness in the brain. But even though there can be counseling, there can be medication, there can be other processes to call wholeness and healing in the mind. Even though we know you can, be, you can receive radiation and different things and chemo for cancer for the body. But you can also be miraculously healed of cancer without the doctor's treatment. Do we agree? Just like you can, it gets good y'all. Just like you can go to counseling and take medications and different things to regulate things so you can think a certain way, you can also be healed miraculously, mentally, through the blood of Jesus Christ. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wickedness. Look at the person beside you and say, you was wicked. See, that's that's why y'all messed up right there. You don't even know them people. You don't know their name. You just told them good morning, and then you're going to call these people wicked, and you want me to break the fight up. You can't do that kind of stuff in church. You better listen to everything I tell you to say before you start saying that stuff to these people. Here's a problem. Here's a problem. Here's a problem. Check this out. When you call church folk wicked, they get mad. Let me calling me no wicked. I ain't wicked. Who, who, who you think you is? I'm talking about no wicked. I ain't never been wicked a day of my life. Let's keep it. It says wickedness, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing. Has anybody in here ever been wicked? Not wicked, man. Not that public enemy wicked. I'm talking about sin. I'm talking about injustice. I'm talking about wrongdoing. The punishment required for our well-being fell on him. And by his stripes, wounds, we are healed. Next verse. Next verse. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned each one to his own way. But the Lord has caused the wickedness of us. Some of y'all forgot what wickedness was. He tells you again. Your sin, your injustice, and your wrongdoing to fall on him instead of us. Here's what he's saying. Your wickedness, because there is a wage for sin. The Bible says the pay, the wages for sin is death. You could not escape or pay the bill for your own wickedness, your own sin, your own injustice. So Jesus now had to be the unblemished lamb to come down and pay the bill for the food that you ate and skipped out on. So now he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet... Oh, thank you, Jesus. It wasn't me. He did not open his mouth. How many of you have messed up stuff because you can't keep your, don't raise your hands in here because, but have you ever just messed up because you open your mouth? Have you ever just messed up because you say, I can't take this no more. I ain't putting up with this. Have you ever just cussed? Y'all don't cuss over here. Have you ever, cu- okay, okay, we got this, is the cussing section because they, it, <laughs> We're talking about a long time ago. Because last week was no fussing, no cussing, no gossiping. I'm just preaching to my whole church. And if you sit there to my people in here cuss, yes. That's why we're here. 
we trying to stop cussing. Ain't no no cussing clinics, so we might as well come to church and say, God, I love you, but I need that right there in my life because if my auntie called me one more time trying to check me, I'm going to cuss her out, I'm going to cuss her back in, and You go to the gas station because you need gas. You go to the hospital because you're sick. You come to church because you need to be changed. God, change me. I ain't faking up in here. I need some help. I need you to change me. Pick me up. Turn me around. Place my feet on something. And if we will let people be honest, we can get some change. Don't come in here acting like you ain't got no issues. You got issues. They got issues. But God is an issue solver. (laughs) He was oppressed. He was afflicted. He did not open his mouth to complain, watch this, or defend himself. I'm so grateful Jesus didn't open his mouth. But check this out. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You said greater is he that's in me. Come on, Bible readers, than he that's in the world. That means the greater force is on the inside of you, even though there's a great force on the outside, but the greater force it's on the inside of you. Y'all not talking about There's a spirit that's great on the outside, but the greater spirit is on the inside of me. So that means no matter what this spirit tries to do to this spirit, I ain't got time to be responding to foolishness. I'm on my way to blessing land. I'm on my way to purity. I'm on my way to integrity. And I don't have time to be stooping to your level, to be messing with your foolishness. God has picked me up and brought me to a new place. And I ain't... You don't have to respond to everybody. Hush your mouth. Some of y'all need to walk out of here and say, Lord, I need that hush your mouth blessing. I need, I need, I need, I need that mouth one, that, 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 that one, that mouth one, because I keep putting my foot in my mouth. I put the kitchen sink in my mouth. I ruin opportunities. I keep getting fired off jobs. I mess up every relationship. I sabotage everything you got for me because I cannot keep my mouth closed. Welcome to all of our guests to the Faith Center. It's so good to have you here today. Just uh... <laughs> number three, and we're done. Number three, and we're done. Number three, and we're done. The power of communion, check this, helps you, to, it gives you defeating the plan of Satan against our lives. Defeating the plan of Satan against our lives. Satan has a plan for your life, whether you know it, acknowledge it, or, or not. The passage translation of John 10, 10, check this out. It says, a thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy. That's his plan for your life. But the thing that challenges me is this. I'm a numbers guy. I'm not an English guy. You can already tell. I done said so many double negatives and stuff in this sermon. You already know. God bless his heart. He's trying the best he can. He can't talk. I can count. Can't talk that well. But I do see he wants, he only has how many things in mind? But then he lists three. And this revelation jumped out to me. It doesn't matter which avenue he takes as long as he accomplishes the one thing. And that's just to take you out. So if he has to steal from you, cool. If he has to slaughter you, cool. If he has to destroy your family, cool. He don't matter. All he wants is just to defeat you. But there's something that Jesus did as a part of communion that protects you from this. You want to know what it is? Okay, let me show you. For the two people that care. Let me show you. 
The blood of Jesus Christ is our defense weapon that cancels every plot Satan has devised against us. Let me show you what I'm talking about, the blood of Jesus, Hebrews 9 and 22. In ancient times, there were covenants or contracts that had to be signed, and it wasn't sealed until the shedding of an innocent lamb or animal was, was committed. So you have this contract, but there had to be some blood that was shed. This scripture is going to expound that a little bit more. Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. Watch this. And without the, the shedding of blood, there is is no forgiveness of sins. Without the sin. So his blood, when we sing the old school song, blood came streaming down, the blood came, that's for our sins, not just to sing it, it was for a reason. So check this out. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Hang with me and we're going to put it together. There's something in the Bible in Exodus 12 called the Passover. This is now a Jewish festival where they come to celebrate the Israelites are free from Egyptian slavery. The Passover lasts 14 to 15 days. But now there's some instructions given and why it's the significance for you and I about the Passover. Now just hang with me because this week, this week, I want you to take these same promises and the same power that we've talked about in the Bible and that's what you're going to believe God for your family and for your life this week. Because these are the benefits, watch this, and if you don't accept them, it does not mean they don't work. But I want you to live in it. I want you to be free. I want you, put number three back up there. Check this out. Check this out. Number three, number three, number three, number three. Defeating the plan of Satan against your life. We need some winners in here that are not being succumbed to the things of Satan. Here's the thing about Satan. He know what you like. He know exactly where to put it. He, 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 know, he, know, he knows and he's just doing this right here. You want it? You want it? You know, Satan. You want it? No. Kind of. You want it? Well, let me come over there and see if it's real. See, no, 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 no. You, can... you want it? Who's looking? You want it? A little bit ain't gonna hurt. You want it? The devil is busy. He sure is. He doing his job. You want it? My mind's telling me no. But my... We can sing it till the court case is done. We can sing it till the court case is done. After the court case, we got to find another song. But until the court case is done, my mind's telling me no. Want it? Hey, hey, and this is what you do because it pleases you, it brings instant gratification, it's what you're accustomed to, Woo! and you're fearful to trust God to do it His way. You take it, and He says, Yeah, uh huh. All that little crying and stuff you're doing in church on Sunday. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it, fi it defiles your spirit and you wonder why your children acting how they acting. Because they detecting your spirit. Because your spirit can't be loving and nurturing because you don't have peace. Because you know you're supposed to be doing one thing, but you're doing another thing. Preach, Pastor Campbell! <laughs> Some of you today need to do this right here. You know what? I'm tired of this. Take it back. I'm done with that. And I'm going to apply this communion power over my life. Watch this. Because there's a power that we need that's greater than ourselves. Because if you could do it yourself, you would have already done it by now. But if you'll just be honest and say, I need you, Jesus. I need some help, man. I'm trying to change, but I can't do this by myself. I need your power. Is that good, y'all? 
So let's look at what the Passover lamb does, and let's, let's go. Exodus 12 and 1, I'm going to read it, just follow along with me. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of the months. It shall be the first of the month of the year to you. Speak ye to all the congregation of Israel, the faith center, saying in the tenth day of this month, they shall take them, um, uh, uh, take them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for a lamb, let him and his neighbor unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb, listen to this, shall be without blemish. A male of the first year, you shall take it out of the sheep or from the goats. Now, let me bring that together and put it in 2019 for everybody. God is saying, look, I want you to take a lamb. I want you to sacrifice it because, remember, the contract, we need some blood. We need some blood. So he says, I want you to get the lamb, and I want you to tell everybody in their household to get the lamb. And if they can't really get the lamb, get with their neighbors, but I need everybody to do this. And if they don't have a lamb, get a goat. But don't give me an excuse why you can't sacrifice something to me. But don't go get your worst sacrifice. I want you to go get your best sacrifice. Say, God wants my best. Okay, so we're now in verse number six. And you shall keep it until the 14th day, the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Watch this. Now he gives the instructions. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two posts, on the two side posts, and on the upper posts of the house. So here it is, your door. He says, I want you to take the blood of the sacrifice. I want you to put it on the two side posts. I want you to put it on the upper post. Right. Wherein they shall eat it. Here's my next verse. Here's my next verse, number 11. And thus shall ye eat it with the loins girded, your shoes on uh, your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is, watch this, the Lord's Passover. Here's my next verse that, that makes us shout right here. Next verse. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. Here's what he says. When I see the blood, that's a signal of the covenant contract that you're covered. Say, I'm covered. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. No plague be upon you to destroy you. What did the scripture say that the enemy's plan was? To slaughter you, to kill you, and to destroy you. But when I see the blood, I'll pass over you and no plague be upon you to destroy you. This is what we have to protect us from the hand and the plan of Satan. The blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary. Let me bring this together. So, when I see you, I see you. When you see me, you see me. When the devil sees you, he sees blood. No, no, no. When I see you, I see you. When you see me, you see me. But when the devil sees you, he sees blood. And as long as you're under the blood of Jesus and protected by the covenant, there's nothing he can do for you. He can't kill you. He can't steal from you. He can't destroy you. Now, life can happen, but the devil can't do nothing. Why? Because I got a signed contract agreement. You better go somewhere else with that because if you mess with me, you got to mess with my daddy. But the problem happens is when we get out of the protection of the blood covenant and now the enemy says, game on. But as long as you stay under the blood covenant, I'll go back to my scripture, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. This is why I talk smack to the devil. You can't do nothing to me that God won't let you do. You can't take nothing from me that God didn't want me to have or he going to give me better. You can't touch my marriage. You can't touch my children. You can't mess with my money. You can't mess with my mind. You can't destroy my future. Nah, 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 nah. All you can do is get big man. I am covered. 
This is why in the Bible, my dog, the Job was covered. And the devil had to go to God and say, hey, what about Job? He says, I can't touch him. He says it this way. There's a hedge of protection all around him. All he saw was the blood of Jesus around him. And there's nothing he can do. That's why I say this, Kiosha. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And this week. When you have communion with your family, that body that's broken, you're going to claim healing emotionally. Please stand. Mentally. Spiritually. This week, when you take that cup and, and the juice, you're going to remember what this relationship is all about. Hey, you don't come to church for blessings. You come to church because of relationship. This week, when you receive that communion, you're going to say, Father... This is going to be a sign. The arguing that's been in this home, it's going to pass over. The strife that's been in this home, it's passing over. The insecurities that's been in me, it's passing over. The suicidal thoughts, passing over. The lack of trust in this home, am I preaching in here? Passing over. The frustration of feeling like I'm the last one hired, the first one fired, always being behind, never having enough. You should walk around with a greater confidence. Covered. 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 You know, Portia, what makes me not go back to be my old self? The hedge won't let me out. No, my old self, it's always knocking at the door. Hey, let me in. My mama said I can't handle no company. <laughs> let me in. Can't nobody come in my house when my mama ain't here. Matter of fact, my daddy said can't nobody even get in my yard. Get out of my yard. I grew up in the old school where if somebody was in your yard, but when your mama didn't want got home, was not home. You got a whooping because wasn't nobody supposed to be in the yard. I need you. You got to get out of my yard. You got to go. You got to go. My old self is always trying me to get, get me to be my old self. Stay covered. In the power of your blood. Let's pray. Father, there's power in your communion. As we remember you, as we fellowship with you, and as we're covered by your blood. I pray this week for healed bodies and healed relationships, healed mentalities. I thank you, Father, that you protect us and seal us so we can live an authentic life for you. With all eyes closed, all heads bowed, I want to ask you a question. If you die today, where do you spend eternity? If you can't say, I'm going to heaven with Jesus to live with Jesus... I want to include you in my prayer. If you can't say, I I'm going to heaven to live with Jesus, I want to include you in my prayer. Maybe you walked away and it's time for you to rededicate yourself to Jesus. I want to include you in my prayer right where you stand and I want to give you some free information to explain the decision that you just made. If you're saying, Pastor Campbell, if I die today, I'm not certain I'm going to heaven, please include me in your prayer. On the count of three with no hesitation or reservation, I want you to hold that hand high in the air and the ushers are going to give you something to help you explain your decision. One, two, three, slip that hand in the air. If you're saying, Pastor Campbell, please include me in your prayer. I see you right there. I see you right there. I see you back there. I see you. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else saying, include me in your prayer, Pastor? Include me. I see you right here. I see you right here. I see you back there. I see you back there. Yeah. Most importantly, God sees you. God sees you. God sees you. So those of you that raised your hand and faith in a family, please repeat after me. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your love and your life. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Teach me how to live an overcoming life for you. I confess I am changed. I am saved. I am forgiven in Jesus name would you say amen can we celebrate God in here for decisions today come on let's celebrate him for